One of the best features of Bitwig are the modulators. These come in form of building blocks and can be applied to any device to control, well, everything. They are simple and ready to use and also offer deep features like cross-modulation and audio rate. And today I'll explain everything you need to know about them. But what is a modulator? Basically a modulator is something that will add changes to a signal over time. The most basic example is an LFO. The sign shape makes the signal go up and down from positive to negative values. If we use it to modulate something, it will give you that same movement. They are really useful and one of the fundamental features for synthesizers, as they can replace your hands so you can focus on other stuff. Before we start, be sure to like this video. So, the most common are the LFOs, envelopes, sequencers, and even velocity, the mod wheel, and the pitch wheel. The thing with Bitwig is that every device has these three slots with a plus button. And since Bitwig 5, we also have that on the project tab. Now, you can use a lot more than three, but this is the form it takes when you don't have any modulation. Pressing on the plus button will give you a list of all the modulators. Then after adding one, you press this arrow and then go to the modulation destination. Then you can choose the amount and direction of the modulation. If the modulator is bipolar, it will go up and down for the point that you have the parameter. But if you want to go only on one side, you have to disable the bipolar mode, which also depends on which modulation you are using. As I mentioned on this other video about scene building, Bitwig synthesizers are pretty basic because the idea is that you build your own modulation system to affect different stuff. Another feature that makes modulators in Bitwig even better is that every third-party plugin will be loaded up into a plugin device, and inside of it, every parameter of that plugin will be mapped to these knobs. This is great because you can use modulators and effects inside that, and then save the preset as a Bitwig device. This feature will save you a lot of time, not only for modulators, but also for automating. <laughs> As this is a general video about big bit modulators, I will briefly explain what many of the modulators do and what are the categories. So if you want a video focused on one type of modulator, let me know in the comments and I can make a series on that. But right now I want to give you an idea on how powerful this modulation system really is. Envelopes are pretty easy to understand, they are as common as LFOs and synthesizers and even effects. And the most typical one is the ADSR, which stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain and Release. <laughs> The only thing that I don't like about the ADSR is that the values are on percentage. And despite, I know I have to use my ears, I like to have the information on milliseconds. So when using an envelope, use the ADSR. And by the way, H stands for hold. On the other hand, we have the AHD and the ramp, which is, well, a ramp. About segments, I have a whole video explaining the MSEC devices. You can watch it right here. So the last one is an ADSR that activates with every incoming MIDI note. The interesting thing is that works with notes coming from other tracks. LFOs are also really easy and simple to use. We have three basic ones that are the beat LFO, the classic LFO and the LFO. And to be honest, I don't use the beat LFO at all. I'm sure it has its uses, but the classic LFO can also be synced and has more time divisions. The normal LFO on the other hand has more options for choosing its timing, even giving you the possibility of going audio rate, which means the frequency is going to be the same as the note you're playing. <laughs> Once again, curves and wavetables are shown on this MSEC video, but very quickly they are great to make rhythmic stuff. On the other hand, random is one of my favorites. It will give you random values. You can set it on hertz or time signature, sync it or even freeze it, and it can also be polyphonic. Other category are the sequencers. They are great. First stage is pretty easy. And again, it's a bit obsolete now that we have curves. Steps is a really advanced step sequencer where the value you put here is the amount of modulation. It can be bipolar. You can sync it to your project and you can set different amount of steps and even randomize them. Parsec, on the other hand, will give you up to eight steps, which will send a specific value to any parameter. Audio driven will act upon the incoming audio signal. Audio rate will convert any sound into a modulation source. Audio sign chain will take the shape of the amplitude. The envelope follower will take the shape of the sound, but it works only if before it is a sound source. 
The interface category give us simple modulators like buttons and macros, and the XY, Vector 4 and Vector 8 are pretty much the same, just that they have different amount of modulation outputs. The great thing about them is that you can fade in and out different values by dragging this dot. Modifiers are thought to change an incoming modulation signal. The way they work is that, for instance, if you have a sample and hold, you take an LFO and modulate the input, so then the sample and hold will work on how that input is moving. The same for quantize, it has an input and enough to change the resolution. Finally, on polynom, you have the input right here that you have to modulate with other modulator, and then you apply a formula. Finally, on node-driven, we have modulators that will activate with each incoming node. For instance, pitch 12 will send a value from 0 to 1, depending on the node you're playing. On expressions, you get the basic parameters for your MIDI keyboard as velocity, release, pressure, and timbre. We have a node counter that will send a value every time it counts a specific number of nodes. Besides that, we also have the key tracking that will give you values depending on how high or low are you playing on the keyboard. And finally, we have the voice stack. This one deserves a video on its own, but basically we'll have values from zero to one and we'll divide that on different copies with different values, depending on how you program it. With voice stack, for instance, you can create complex relationships between different modulations with just one device. So I have explained what the modulators are, which ones Bitwig offer. So finally, let's go to some tips, tricks, and ideas. First of all, I mentioned earlier that you can use modulators on third-party plugins, thanks to these macros. But this goes deeper than that. There are many plugins that don't have any type of modulation, so you can choose whichever plugin you want and, thanks to the modulators, transform it into a new experimental plugin for you. Besides that, some advanced plugins and synthesizers as pigments won't let you modulate every parameter, but thanks to Bitwig, now you can, which opens up a lot more possibilities. <laughs> Another tip is understanding how modulation works within the project, folders, tracks, and so on. For instance, if you have a synth and then you have an effect, you cannot apply the modulator on the synth to a parameter of the effect, unless the effect is inside the synth. This is thanks how containers are programmed in Bitwig. <laughs> This works also in groups. If you have many effects inside one group, you can put modulators on the group device and then modulate any parameter of any device and plugin that's inside that group. Following this idea is how I managed to replicate Infiltrator using the grid because I put every effect inside the simplest container which is the chain and then I put the chain inside the effects grid. That way I can use all the modulators in the grid to modulate parameters on those effects. Next tip is to modulate modulators. It doesn't work only with the modifiers, it works with everything. Some modulators will have a modulation amount, so you can actually modulate that amount and have the same shape or type of modulation, but with different values all the time. For instance, using a random to modulate the amount of curves. Something that you can do even on some synthesizers is to use the velocity or any other modulator to modulate the decay of an envelope. This will give you a different vibe depending on the heat you're making. Final tip is to check which modulators have the pitch option on the speed, which will let you control with audio rate any parameter you want. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, but it's going to give you more options for experimenting with different kinds of audio rate synthesis. Thank you. 
So I hope you learned one thing or two about modulators today, and if you want a deep look into a category of modulators, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.